Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create uh, buffers on maps. Uh, and uh, the buffers are really interesting because it lets us uh, basically uh, do some comparison of time and distance uh, on, uh, on different uh, uh, locations. Uh, so basically what we wanna do is we wanna open up a map and uh, we have to decide uh, basically where we want to try and create these buffers around. Now, if you had uh, a layer already open, maybe you, you had your students create a layer of their address or something like that, as simple as that, you could do that. Um, but a simple way to do it is to just kind of like enter uh, you know, a location in the search bar up here. So I'm gonna put my school name in here. All right, and it's gonna search it. And what we wanna do is we wanna click this add to map notes. So we click add to map notes, and now we get a dot, and uh, uh, and we've got now a layer up here called map notes. Now if we wanted to, we could actually save the layer. We could rename it to, you know, a kernel by secondary. They could call it my house, whatever. Uh, I click okay. And we could also then uh, save the layer if we wanted to, and so students uh, can you know import it later if they wanted to as a layer, um, but uh, but I'm not going to do that right now. So the thing that we want to do is we want to run go and run an analysis, and what we want to do is we're going to do a use proximity. Uh, so the first thing we're going to create is just like a buffer of just a distance. Uh, so we can choose a layer containing features to buffer. So we're choosing the layer of kernel by secondary. Uh, so if you had lots of different things, so for example, uh, sometimes uh, I'll do uh, parks. I'll have students uh, have like a layer of bunch of parks that uh, you know. Make Maybe you would be willing to walk, you know, uh, you know, the, the sphere of influence of that park might be two kilometers and we see for all of the parks, uh, what kind of area do they cover, for example. Um, but anyway, so we pick our spot, so kernel by secondary, and we want to know what the buffer size is. I'm going to do two kilometers. We can do multiples if you, we wanted to by creating a space. Uh, I do two kilometers because uh, in my classroom, we talk about how like two kilometers is kind of like this area that you would be willing to walk to, uh, to get to places. Uh, and then it's going to ask, okay, what is the resulting layer name for that? Uh, and so I'm just going to write a two kilometer buffer of kernel by secondary. And I'm going to save that in my, uh, all right. Now this button right here is incredibly important because if you click use current map extent, it's only gonna do what's showing on here. So we can either zoom out or just unclick it. And then we're gonna hit run analysis. And this will take a few moments. Um, basically what's happening here is you're basically actually sending like a command signal to the uh, Esri servers and then they're gonna process it uh, and then send it back to you. So it's not really like your computer's doing doing the work um, but uh, you know you're sending it off a command to a different computer that's going to do the work and then send it back to you and uh, this will just take a few moments Okay. So now we've got this big blue thing on our map, right? Uh, and that's basically because it's created a, a buffer. As we start to zoom out, right, we get to see a little bit more information here. Um, so I, what I like to do is, uh, so if we unclick that, you'll see that the point just kind of comes to go. Um, I should have written here, I'm going to actually rename this uh, two kilometers uh, as the crow flies 
Okay. Uh, and I'm doing that because uh, what I like to do with my students is talk about, okay, like there's two kilometers straight out, but how far is actually two kilometers from a certain point, right? Because we can't just walk a straight line. We've got houses in the way and things of this nature. Uh, so we've got this buffer of two kilometers. Uh, which is great but what we're going to do is we're going to do one more analysis tool now we can click analysis here or we can also click analysis underneath the layer that we want to run the analysis on so we're going to run it on the kernel by secondary again all right and now we can go to create drive time areas here now they call it drive time areas um, but they actually have lots of different options here from driving time driving distance to also walking time and walking distance so i'm going to do walk walking distance and again now I'm going to click two kilometers for that again we're choosing the kernel by secondary point as our spot to work with all right uh, and this won't matter because we're only to have the one point uh, if we had like multiple points like parks or something like that we would have to decide you know well what do we want to do if they start overlapping these uh, these circles do we want them to overlap do we want them to dissolve split etc uh, and then we need to give it a name again I'm just gonna leave it what they came up with uh, and just to play it safe I'm gonna unclick it and then we're gonna run analysis again and we're gonna wait for it to do its thing Okay, so now we have a new layer here, and this is showing, okay, this is how much I can actually walk um, from uh, Colonel By in terms of two kilometers. If I could only walk two kilometers, this is the area that I could cover. And, and what's interesting about it is if uh, if I wanted to, I can actually like click on the buffers and it gives you, if you scroll down here, you can see the area in square kilometers, all right? All right, so if I was, you know, as the crow flies, you know, I could cover 12.56 square kilometers. Uh, however, if I'm walking, right, sorry, if I'm walking, I could only actually cover, oh, it usually shows me, oh, there it is, 4.64 square kilometers, right? So that is a significant difference in, in space. So you can have like these conversations with students about the differences in terms of, you know, how far, what is actually accessible to us in terms of uh, walking, you know, within, uh, you know, a certain area. And remember, there was lots of options for our analysis, right? We didn't have to do just walking times. We could do driving time. Uh, uh, we could do driving distance. We could do walking time walking distance etc so there's lots of different options here um, but another thing that you could do also is you could actually go and add a layer and we can go uh, search for layers in my content and we can type in VLE land use right but basically if the students save that layer of the land use types we can add that to the map hmm. And I just need to quickly do this. Uh, type of land use. Okay. I'm just going to leave it like that. And now what we can actually do is we can kind of overlap the two maps and figure out, okay, so what kind of things are accessible to the, you know, to the students, you know, within a 20 minute or two kilometer walk from their household. All right. So anyways, buffers are just a cool way to, you know, again, create like areas of, you know, okay, how far can I travel if I'm willing to walk two kilometers or 20 minutes, etc. So hopefully you find the uh, uh, video uh, informative. Uh, like I said, it's just a great way to, uh, uh, you know, compare distances and, you know, and look at what can be covered uh, in, uh, you know, within a certain area.